I am executive director for uh, Vita uh, International, and uh, my organization is based in France, and we are working on bioethics issues, and especially uh, on end-of-life issues. Uh, one, um, we have supporting group, uh, service for uh, uh, people who are facing difficulties with end of life and, uh, and uh, mornings and all that stuff. And um, it's very key for us to be uh, very uh, near the, the people. And uh, it's why we are speaking out in France, because we know what are uh, the pains and the suffering of people. Um, and we are uh, conducting campaigns as well to uh, the most recent campaign. We were in the street and asked to people, uh, what, uh, how do you uh, live with the death? It was a very difficult question. And people were very open to answer and say, well, in my life, my grandmother uh, was, um, I, I, uh, I was, uh, yeah, I, the death of my grandmother was very painful for me, but my grandmother says to me, it's very important to, uh, to, um, uh, to uh, live uh, every minute in your life, you know? And they, they, it's kind of message they put on the paper, and we have a website and say all these positive things of transmission uh, from uh, a generation to another, and uh, it's, a ca it's a way to speak about these subjects in a new way, <laughs> and it's not only painful, but uh, it's just life. Um, and we, we, we do a lot of uh, alerts and uh, ex um, text to explain what's going on uh, with end of life, and it's very uh, important to uh, explain to people what's going on because uh, there is a lot of confusion about uh, end of life uh, issues. Uh, and we meet decision makers and medias uh, in making advocacy and all that stuff. What you must know is that uh, France is uh, rather reluctant to, reluctant to legalize euthanasia. And uh, our bioethics point of view are based not like uh, common law countries and uh, on uh, autonomy of the patient, but on solidarity. Well, it's our tradition. So that's why euthanasia assisted suicide, uh, there is a temptation to that, but uh, um, there is also um, um, bricks, bricks uh, to, 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 the, to, uh, to legalize. Um, what we have done up, uh, is uh, the legalization in France, first right to palliative care and after right to patients, including the, the right to refuse treatments, and uh, in uh, 2005, end of life bill. This uh, bill was not really uh, necessary, but uh, we had a, a case called Vincent Amber. It's close to Vincent Lambert, but it's not the same case. And uh, that's why he, has, um, he asked for euthanasia uh, after his car accident. And her mother and the doctor performed the euthanasia. So it was a big case in France. And uh, so uh, we had a new law. Uh, and uh, this law is interesting and tricky. Uh, interesting because it fixed what um, was already implemented. And uh, it made it clear. Uh, so no um, over medication, no euthanasia, but use palliative cares to relieve the patients uh, at the end. And the use um, of medications to uh, relieve pains that can uh, affect the delay of days is double effect. I don't know if you understand. Yes, double effect. But the intention uh, is not to kill, it is only uh, the indirect consequence. And it's very important in all the bioethics issues is the intention, <laughs> uh, I think. The doctors, uh, and uh, what was new is that all the backdoor uh, euthanasia was, um, it was the end of uh, backdoor euthanasia with this uh, law because uh, we have promoted a lot of uh, palliative care and uh, young doctors were reluctant to, uh, to do uh, euthanasia, and uh, it was uh, underground euthanasia. So it was very interesting to see when you um, uh, 
promote palliative care, you can change uh, the, the way of uh, uh, practicing uh, medicine. Um, but uh, this law was tricky because uh, concerning the nutrition and hydration status, this law uh, allowed to stop useless treatment or life-sustaining uh, care uh, that can include nutrition and hydration, even if it was not uh, clearly said. And uh, our former president, he was uh, an oncologi uh, oncologist, wrote a paper at that time and said, starving the new French way of euthanasia. It was a very controversial uh, paper, and, uh, but it's not so far from the reality today um, and uh, can be the practice in several palliative care units. Uh, it's not everywhere, but uh, it's a, t a trend. Um, the, the last past years, we have a, a really a big commitment of our government to uh, develop palliative care until uh, our new government in uh, two or three years ago with Francois Hollande. And Francois Hollande, um, our new president, had a program he included a confusing approach at the end of life, uh, of the end of life situations. He said everyone should benefit of a physician assisted uh, dying. But what is before, uh, behind that? Uh, did he mean more palliative care? Because uh, what is physician assisted dying? Or assisted suicide and euthanasia? And after three years of hearings, reports, uh, we um, present a, a new law with two, uh, two measures, ma ma main measures. It's uh, what you say, continuous deep sedation at request, request of the patient um, if they face unbearable pain. We, you heard all the, the, all the speakers before me, uh, so it's, uh, well, the way of speaking. And that includes physical and psychological pains. And uh, advanced directives can uh, binding binding doctors. So uh, there are a lot of debates. Uh, so it was introduced in uh, in uh, January. Uh, so a, um, a lot of uh, discussions um, on these subjects. Sedation, you know, is a specific treatment to relieve pains when the other medications uh, do, do not work. Um, but uh, it's very exceptional. And uh, a lot of doctors in France say, no, we cannot do that because uh, we must do all what we can do uh, to avoid terminal sedation. Um, so what we have done uh, um, with my organization, uh, we have... Um, We have decided to, to work together with other people, with doctors, with uh, handicapped people, and it was the first time we, we work with handicapped people. And maybe because we are part of uh, EPC, uh, uh, I, I uh, realized that uh, in the United States, uh, in all the countries, uh, handicapped people were in the front, but not in France, because it's not the tradition. And uh, I... Um, I shared with, my, uh, peop uh, with people in my organization, I say, let's try, let's try, it will be new, and uh, now we will have handicapped <laughs> people uh, to speak about that with other people, but uh, not only. And um, uh, uh, what we do, uh, we um, asked, um, we found a, a very famous guy, uh, it's called uh, Philippe Pozzo di Borgo, whose story uh, was told in a famous uh, movie in France called Intouchable. And this, uh, and Intouchable, maybe, <laughs> I don't know. And um, the movie has had the best audience since uh, these last years. So it's very well known and uh, is a sponsor of uh, the group of people and NGOs gathering, yes, doctors, patients, students as well. Uh, and called not care, not killing, but relieving, not killing. It's, uh, and um, we made demonstrations and um, uh, to, um, to alert on the risks of opening to assisted suicide without saying the words, you know, terminal sedition. And uh, in, 
in few cases, can be uh, assisted uh, suicide. What is complicated to um, fight against this law, that, the, so, well, this law is useless because we already have sedation in France, so uh, we, we don't need a, a law for that. But uh, I think um, what our president and who was a socialist party want to, they, they have promised to do something. They don't want to go to euthanasia because I think France, French people are not ready. Uh, especially French doctors are not ready to it, and they don't want to have uh, French doctors against them. So it's kind of a, a step, a step without saying the, the things. Uh, so there is a very uh, big confusion, and people, uh, even Christian people, they don't really understand what's going on. Uh, and uh, the, the, the problem we face, and I think it's like in our, all our countries, is the difficulty for people to have an objective position concer concerning uh, the sense of agony or uh, even the sense of the last days of people. And uh, we are very supported by uh, psychiatrists, uh, palliative cares, uh, working in palliative cares, and they explain to media how it's important to have uh, people to take uh, utmost uh, conscience of what's going on because it's very important, these, these last um, words that we can share with our, uh, you know, uh, uh, father and mothers uh, <coughs> at the end of life. So uh, now the law has been presented to the, uh, uh, presented to the High Chamber, uh, is presenting at the, uh, at the High Chamber, it's called the Senate, uh, already voted by the Low Chamber, uh, the deputy. And uh, I think that uh, our positions, or what we have done, demonstration and uh, all that stuff, um, had a really uh, good impact because we have a lot of doctors 10,000 doctors and nurses who have signed a petition asking for cons conscience objection if the law is introduced like uh, it's uh, uh, like that, they ask for uh, conscience objection, saying so it's opening to assisted suicides. And uh, the senators have, uh, are starting to clarify uh, a bit the words and the practices to eliminate, uh, eliminate the risk of euthanasia. But I'm not sure they, they will succeed, and uh, it's still dangerous. So uh, we are uh, really uh, mobilized uh, against this law. Uh, but what is new is the debate. The speakers before me uh, spoke about it. It's the judgment uh, of the European Court of Human Rights yesterday, the case of Vincent Lambert, because the case of uh, this case is really what we fear to have in our country. And if the European Court say, well, yes, you can do that, uh, it's uh, rather tricky. So um, just to explain what's going on, um, in, the, in the European Court, they uh, say maint they maintain the decision of the French Supreme Court uh, saying that this guy can uh, can have the withdrawal of nutrition and hydration uh, because uh, his life is, uh, well, at the end, but it's not at all at the end. And um, um, what they say also is that the parents cannot act in the name of their son and on behalf of their son because uh, at the European Court, you must be directly uh, concerned by the request but when you are handicapped and you can uh, speak. Uh, so it's a very, um, uh, it's very, uh, um, uh, it's very uh, frightening <laughs> to see that. Uh, this man is 39 years old now. He had an accident in 2008. Uh, since uh, then, he uh, is in a persistent, it's not vegeta vegetative state, but uh, minimal consciousness. Uh, so he had no way to, communicate, to commun communicate with him, but he feels things and, uh, you know. Uh, and uh, what is important to know is that uh, there is no medical treatment, 
he, bre he can breathe and uh, uh, he sleeps and, <laughs> and uh, so he has really uh, a life, but uh, minimal life, but uh, he has. And uh, just um, uh, nutrition and feeding is uh, just to uh, normal <laughs> way to uh, to take care of him. But uh, so the, the 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 question is this uh, way of uh, how to uh, consider nutrition and feeding. Uh, in the European Court, five judges against twelve uh, were really opposed of what was going on. And uh, you have to read this statement of these five judges because it's very important and we have to support them and maybe uh, we have to uh, make uh, it known. Um, and just to add to the end of my, uh, I tried to exp um, I wrote, yes, what was going on made me so that you can uh, understand. Um, sorry, I'm lost. Yes, this judge uh, said what is being proposed is nothing more and nothing less that a, sev a severely disabled person who is unable to communicate his wishes um, uh, on the basis of a number of questionable assumptions be deprived of two basic life-sustaining necessities. So it's very important to uh, hear that. Uh, so they say we find that conclusion not only frightening, but uh, uh, it's a retrograde step uh, in the degree of protection and uh, for uh, vulnerable people. And uh, just they say also, uh, the question uh, that we have to, um, to see, uh, what is the status of artificial uh, um, treatment, <laughs> yes, uh, and they explain every form of feeding and even with a um, bottle in a baby mouth, it's a, it's a case, it's, a, it's, it's not artificial, but uh, you, know, you have a mediation to have uh, the, the, to it. So uh, artificial is not uh, the, it's, uh, it's very tricky uh, word. So you can see what they said. And uh, they said, what is uh, the main uh, question? Uh, it's, um, is hydration and nutrition of benefit of the person without causing any undue burden of pain or suffering or excessive expenditures of resources? So it's, it's a real uh, question. So you, you cannot say uh, it's, uh, it's artificial, so we can stop or not stop. Um, and uh, at the end, uh, they, they said, and uh, it's just to my conclusion, uh, these five judges say, uh, we, uh, uh, two, uh, five years ago, the court accepted the title of the conscience of Europe, and we regret that the court has, with its judgment, it's very hard, forfeited this uh, above mentioned title. So my conclusion is, let's be together the conscience in the world. And we have to fight to uh, be the conscience of the world, even if the, our institutions uh, are not, and defending elderly and vulnerable people. Thank you. <laughs>